All right. This is an intro to photo bashing. What I've got here is a basic sketch that I developed uh, really quickly in Procreate, and um, it's pretty loose. When you're photo bashing, the the first thing is to to get the sky in there because that's going to develop the shadow colors from the ambient light, especially if you're doing landscape. The interesting thing about photo bashing is that we can paint right over it, and it can be realistic or it can be more of a painting. So if there are parts of the area that you need to cover up and paint over immediately, you can do that straight away, and you can paint directly on the, the photo that you're um, pulling in. I do that uh, fairly often when I do photo bash. Um, photo bashing is sort of like a photo collage, and it's a good quick way to develop an image um, to a pretty high level. Some people get very, very good at it, and they can do these incredible realistic things. You know, I prefer to use it as, as a painting tool. I think photo bashing is also the most interesting when you use your own references. So if you spend a lot of time collecting references, which I recommend that you do, um, you'll have kind of a good library to, to photo bash from, and that's what we want, you know. You want to have a good variety of things. The other thing that I think is important about it is that all of the references you collect are kind of part of your own experience, and that always makes you more connected to your work and makes your work more interesting. Um, the nice thing about photo bashing is you can take any little bit and piece of an image. You can select areas with a lasso tool. You can transform things. And the scale and color doesn't have to make sense. We can do some adjustments. So here what I'm doing is pulling in this rock area and I like this shadow shape. So I'm going to lasso this extra area, delete it, and then um, uh, do some color adjustments in a little bit. The other thing too is you can just copy and paste the same thing. You can reorder the layer stack and then put it in a slightly different position if you need to layer up various areas and then again delete what you don't need with the lasso tool and move right along um, so now i have this rock area kind of sketched out the value is sort of right um, you know it's at least a dark value Photo bashing can be very difficult if you're using like different times of day, different light sources. That's when your knowledge of painting will come in. Um, so if you're if you're having trouble with photo bashing, you know, go out and take a bunch of photos within an hour of each other, wherever you live, and then photo bash those together. Um, that way, the the lighting and the color ranges are all kind of similar. And if they're also similar to the to the time of day that you want for the image uh, in the end, then that's gonna make it a lot easier. So here what I'm doing is adjusting the hue saturation. Um, this basically gives me the hue, the, the value, and the saturation, which are the three properties of color. So these are little color adjustments. There are other things that you can do, like you could do a brightness contrast adjustment as well. Here I'm switching back and adding a little bit of painting. Just to remind myself of what I wanna do later. So here I just found some grass and I want to get this grassy area up at the top in. Um, so this is again a totally different lighting condition, totally different area, totally different time of day. And you know, you can fuss around with the placement a little bit and the angle um, and then come in, lasso what you want or what you don't want and then delete the rest. Um, Photoshop also has this setting that's in the general preferences um, for pasting some pasting things as smart objects um, it adds an extra step to delete it and rasterize it so you may want to switch that setting I'm not sure about procreate it probably has um, it probably doesn't work in the, in the same manner and here what I'm doing is I'm adjusting the colors to be a little cooler So they have something more to do with the the purple of the night sky or the sunset sky. 
and then we're going to pick up these kind of yellow orange orange highlights as well and I always keep checking back on uh, the sort of thumbnail level so zooming out really far for me is always very productive um, just to be sure that I'm getting the kind of result that I want and again I'm using like the same rock in this right corner because I really like this texture and then again we'll just delete the parts that we don't need and you always want to change it a little bit every time that you use it we're, I'm going to be painting over this anyway because I kind of want a uh, like a concept painting more than anything else um, here I pulled in some textural elements for, for the pathway and this is going to get us kind of started on the path remember when you select out an area you can always select out the inverse so here what I'm doing is I'm selecting out the pathway and then I can select inverse and then delete the parts that I don't want boom there I go then I'll have to color adjust that as well so a lot of photo bashing is just using these these color adjustments to get everything to work together again darkening it cooling it down and remember you have three light types you have your primary source your reflected light and then you have your atmospheric source so here I'm working with a primary light source and an atmospheric source so I don't really have as much reflected light because I don't have a strong primary source so a lot of this image is going to be based on the light that's coming down from the atmosphere and then if you find that there's a gap you can always select bits and pieces of various areas copy the bit and piece and drag it down and then that'll kind of cover up the area here I needed something for the sides of the path to kind of describe the ground so I just grabbed this like desert landscape photo and and I'm just going to use that for the sides of the path so a lot of this is going to get eliminated remember too that you can add two selections by holding various hotkeys so I'm just adding these little bits together and I really only want just a small amount of this to give me the side of the pathway that way the pathway is not like super flat and boring and I think when you're getting to this level of detail this is a relatively small shape in the image so you kind of got to be a little bit careful with the selection you know photo bashing is interesting because it you know you don't have to always be super precise with it because you can do so many things to edit it the other thing overall that you want to pay attention to is the way the layer stacks so you want foregrounds on the lower layers and backgrounds um, you know or rather you want your foreground layers up top you want your background layers down at the bottom and you're going to order all of these things you know in a very much regimented and front to back um, layer stack when you paint on top you can choose to paint on top of each layer um, or you can paint on top of the whole thing um, I think in this one I'll wind up just painting on top of the whole thing so here I needed a shape for the mountains this is a totally different time of day again but the mountains are kind of nice so I'll, uh, I'll select those and then color adjust it to kind of make it work go just kind of lassoing around again select the inverse and delete then from here I can transform again or just sort of reposition to the to the spot that I want um, again I want this to be sort of violet in its color and lower the saturation so it's not like competing and darken it I don't want a huge amount of contrast I want the front areas to pull forward 
And here's where you start need you need to start getting very specific, you know. So I've kind of developed the image to a degree here. And it needs to be now I'm starting to think more closely about how these things relate to each other. There's still stuff from the background that we want to eliminate, but we'll get there. Here I found this little bit of a, an outcropping that'll get this top right shape in the foreground. Again, it's a totally different rock type. It's like sort of eroded limestone. And it's a different time of day, different light direction, but that's all right. So we'll color adjust and we'll wind up painting over it anyway. Sometimes you need to like erase little bits. And that's all right as well. Sometimes little subtle adjustments of these sliders help a lot. Here, I'm just working on that edge, erasing that edge a little bit. The other thing too is that I put the top sketch layer, or I put the sketch layer on top and I put it in multiply blend mode so that it uh, it can be on top but you can kind of see through it. Um, now what I'm doing here is just to cover everything up, I selected a little bit of the sky and I'm just copying and pasting a bunch of these um, as new layers and then putting them over top here. So, because I want a clear picture of like what the sky looks like without the distractions there. And if I kind of squint at it, like some of those harsh edges go away and things make a little more sense. We're gonna come back on on top of this again and make this make a lot more sense. And I wanted like a big lake down in this valley, so I found this little lake scene that I've taken a picture of. So I want to place that somewhere around there and then cut out everything but the water. there. So now I have water in there, but it's not really the right color, but that's okay. We'll come back to it. The other thing that I will need is I'll need a transition from the water to the mountains themselves. So I'm going to pull in a little bit of a tree line just to give it a, an interesting edge. I have to make it, f I'll have to blow this up a lot to kind of make it work. And again, just lassoing the areas that I don't want, being pretty loose with it. And I can keep transforming it until it kind of covers the area that I need it to. There. That's a little better. And of course, I need to just erase a lot of that little sky stuff that was there. And then, you know, an easy way to find the, the layer that you want if you don't name your layers, um, is just to turn the little layer on and off and that, that'll show you which layer you've got selected. Sometimes you need to like up the saturation to be able to get the color right. So here we want a highly saturated but fairly dark violet pr or primarily violet um, area. Now I have the image actually filled in um, and I can start tweaking these color adjustments too for, for these layers.
And sometimes like it gets finicky and you really have to like mess around with it for a while to get something that you that you want. Um, especially in the dark, sometimes it can be hard to see the color. So sometimes you have to lighten it, get the right color, and then get the darkness. There. All right, so that color adjustment's done. Um, and at a certain point, you have to like just go in and turn off the sketch and start painting, you know? Uh, here, I started this brush and um, what I kind of notice is the brush doesn't quite have the, the softness that I want or, or the texture. So I want this to kind of have a lot of texture in the end. You know, and this is kind of like level one photo bashing. We're gonna do, I'm gonna get to a certain point with this and then stop. And then that'll just be the intro to the photo bashing. We're gonna wanna continue with it later and really focus in on um, getting small objects because what I've got now is like the compositional layout. And um, I wanna come in and do photo bashing more like small objects, like small rocks, maybe a few plants, and see if I can get things to work a little bit better as well. So here I have a more satisfactory brush. Um, it's a little more textured. And so what I want to do first is kind of eliminate a lot of those sharp cutout edges. One of those things that happens with photo bashing is you get like this edge that's very cut out, very sharp. And it's kind of like, it's not the most useful edge. Um, it's okay to do a hard edge painting. Um, I'm not saying that. It's just that sometimes it's not the edge that you want. The other thing that, that painting over the photo bash does is that it simplifies everything down. And when you simplify, you get clarity. One of the things that I really enjoy doing is zooming out really far, um, having a tiny little thumbnail size on the screen, and then upping the brush size and painting in big segments. Because what this is going to do is get my overall read correct. And I want to play around with my colors and be sure that I'm getting them dark enough, getting the, the saturation that I want. So I do want to bump up some of the color. And I want to catch some of this um, kind of orangey light in the foreground. I still think this green is too green. Um, all the way through this image, I, I haven't been happy with this with this green. So maybe we'll do something different in part two. But for now, we're going to keep it. One of the things, generally speaking, is where you transition from a light to a dark area um, on one single object, that's where all the texture is. So that's where we're going to focus a lot of energy later in terms of the painting. So here I'm thinking, well, maybe this green's like too, um, too warm and we could cool it down and darken it. Try that out. We'll talk, we'll talk about more ways to get the color to work in a later part. We'll do some stuff about like color unification. Here on the side of the path, I know that it's got to be dark um, for the most part. The pathway itself is probably not going to catch any light at all. Um, so it'll mostly be this ambient color. And here, pushing down the value, I change the hue a little bit. And in terms of uh, like a painting procedure, I like to skip around. Um, 
So if I find that I've uh, that I'm getting stuck in one area, um, and the image isn't really developed yet, like now, I need to stop myself and and work on other areas. Because if I'm I'm getting stuck, if I'm doing only one area, that means that I'm over developing that one area, and I'm not developing it in such a way that I'm paying attention to how that area integrates with the rest of the image. And that's really important. You'll notice too with the photo bashing, a lot of this texture is coming through and creating like interesting little textural effects. In the end, we're going to do some more work with texture in the next part. Talk about how to get those textural effects. Without kind of changing the lighting. So here what I'm doing is I'm picking up dark areas of that under um, that photograph under there and um, using some of the textural shapes uh, to create these light and dark textural areas. So what's interesting about photo bashing is sometimes it gives you suggestions of how you could paint stuff that you wouldn't necessarily come up with on your own. So that's where my head's at right now. Thinking like, what can I pick up out of the photo to create an interesting little sub shape? I think, you know, a lot of people use photo, bash, photo bashing to do realistic stuff, but you don't have to necessarily take it that direction. You can do surrealistic stuff. You can do um, kind of this concept design thing. You can do pretty much whatever you want with it. It's, it's a pretty open experience. Um, I think the most incredible ones are some of the realistic ones. But that doesn't mean it's not an effective tool for um, just, uh, you know, a concept painter or just a painter. So what I want to do here is get a little bit of that light hitting these, the front edge of this um, green area. But the thing is, if I paint it just directly like that, then it looks like I'm getting light from the front, from where we're looking at it. So I need to come back and brush over a little bit of dark value so that only the edge is really lit. pick it up from there. You know, now the scene's sort of starting to come together and now it's time to kind of like push for a couple of areas to get slightly more developed, and slightly more specific. And there's a lot of like rough areas and rough edges. We got to start to fix some of those and simplify it areas in the dark, especially. So if we squint at this too, like, we kind of want the foreground to probably be the darkest part. So we're going to work towards that slowly, start expanding the value range. The other thing too is that contrast brings brings things forward. So we want a very high contrast uh, foreground, which that's sort of happening right now, but we're going to need to push it. And so maybe we'll make a note of that for part two, so that not only do we need to fix the green, we got to fix the contrast range. We need to add texture and we need to photo bash in some small elements to kind of balance out the larger bits of photo bashing that we did in the beginning. Because really, we used photo bashing to establish all the large areas, and we didn't do any photo bashing in the small areas. You know, and by small, I mean like, you know, little rock size, like figure size type stuff. Maybe we also need to put in a person um, just to get a sense of like scale, how big all this stuff is. Um, I think that dark band we also need to fix. Um, 
Now move it out of that level of darkness. Because it needs to read as dark, but it can't be that dark. One of the other things too is um, working on reflection is really important. So we're going to work on that too. I think these trees would catch a little bit of this ambient light just on the treetops on this on this tree line before we get back to the mountains. And then we need to pull some of this sky into the water. And the, the trick to getting it to read like water is that it is a flat plane, but it's, an, it's got all these little ripples to it. So you want to sort of translate down the shapes of the mountains and stuff above it, um, remembering that it's just a reflection and it's going to glance off at an angle. So here you're dabbing colors and using some of these colors to kind of get this reflection to come across. See, now it's starting to work in that little area. Also, be sure to save as you go. I don't do that enough, personally. Now, I think once... Now that everything's kind of established, now you slow down and start thinking. You know, the more you think, the better off everything's going to be. You know, here's your stage where you need to evaluate. You know, look for places where you kind of messed up early on and need to need to fix things. Pay attention to some of the edges. Bring clarity to the shapes, right? Watch out for tangents. See, I still think this green is just too saturated. We're gonna have to fix it. I think we also stylistically need to see a little less of this, um, the texture in the path. It's getting pretty painterly. And again, we're going to swing this back and I think we're going to photo bash again and do like photo bashing for more textural stuff. So that'll help bring this sort of photographic element to it. Um, the other thing about photographs is that, you know, a lot of times we'll have compressed value ranges. Um, and only exposed for one particular value range. So if we wanted a photographic look, we could uh, you know, pretend that we're exposing for the light and have a lot of information in the light and then, you know, blow out the dark areas. But that's kind of like, you know, something that we can mess with in Photoshop and play around with. It's like how much information do we want to include in the lights and in the darks? Because right now kind of everything's sort of fighting for attention and um, over time we'll kind of bring focus to the work. Um, yeah, I think the pathway still needs a lot of work. Getting that tweak down, getting the side of the pathway dark enough, getting the sides um, fully laid out properly. Eliminating a lot of that yellow. There we go. Yeah, here, this is coming along a little better now. Um, 
I think the pathway is a little bit awkward on the bottom left, so it might make a mental note for later to fix that. But that's not the most pressing issue right now. Um, well, so what we've got now is a is a pretty decent composition, right? Like it's got interesting angles and shapes, um, and this is going to be a little preview of what we can do uh, as we progress with photo bashing. Like here, I can select out this little grouping of um, of grasses, and then uh, I can paste it in above this stuff. I can do an overlay blend mode, which overlays the texture, and you can see how it kind of has crazy colors. <coughs> I can lower down the opacity if I need to, and then I can erase the areas that I don't need or want, which is most of it. I just wanted a little bit of grass in the front here. Um, just to bring some grass texture to it. Then, once I get the area that I like, I can merge that down into the painting layer. And then I can paint back over it to kind of get the edge quality that I want. But I can leave kind of the center so that a lot of that internal grass texture stays. Again, the green... I'm not too happy with the actual color of the green and the saturation of it, so we're going to have to keep coming back and keep tweaking it. Yeah, and I think the, the main notes are the green and then knocking down the dark of the tree line above the above the water. So we'll come back and we'll we'll fix those here in a minute. I hope you like this this idea of photo bashing, not just as a, um, a pure photo collaging tool, but potentially as a painting tool. And it, and it could go realistic, it could go painterly like this. Um, and it really helps to, to develop an image fairly quickly. I mean, within a half an hour, you know, we've come pretty far along on this image um, and we've got a lot of information there that we wouldn't normally had have if we just painted it directly um, so to begin with I think it's you know a matter of getting those sketches getting the reference materials that you need and getting them compiled onto that area after that it's a matter of uh, color corrections and picking what you want based on the sky so uh, give this a shot yourself because as always none of this means anything until you try it out so have fun photo bashing <laughs>